Today's lesson will be showing you how to use a drop down box, which they call an option in HTML, to bring in various Purple Mash games. And I'm sure you're going to find it rather interesting. The drop down box will be a whole lot of different selections. It will allow you to click on them and then it will take you to that Purple Mash game. So each one of the different games that you place in this website will be linked to that option box. And the option box is just a drop down. I'm sure you've seen this and I will go through how it looks in a minute. I'm going to be using my code writer. I'm going to open that and I'm going to do all my code in the code writer. You'll be using Notepad. Remember, Code Writer is this, and there you can see the basic outline of an HTML document, hypertext markup language document. You've got the title, the header, the body, and the ending and the starting tags of the HTML. You should be familiar or know what that is. We've been covering that over and over, so everyone who has been listening should have a clear understanding of the parts of an HTML file. And we know that the extension was an HTM extension. .htm. That .htm will allow our browser to read the file. Our browser being Chrome in my instance, and some of you might know the other browsers, Firefox, Safari, etc. Now because we're going to hold a whole lot of different games in here, I'm going to call it Mr. Bradley's Best Games. Because it's going to hold a whole lot of different games that are found in Purple Mesh, and I'm going to use a link in the option to feed those games into my HTML file, my web page. What I've just written over here will be shown as a tab in the HTML file. A tab would be shown right at the top. The tab is going to read Mr. Bradley's best games. It's very important to lay your code out in an orderly way. It must be easy to read. So now I'm going to bring in a script section, a script element. That's going to be placed now in this header, in the heading, the head part of my HTML. So I'm going to write that, a tag script and its type. And here I'm going to indicate what type of script it is. And I'm going to type in text forward slash JavaScript because we're going to be dealing with JavaScript. And that's the type of language we're going to be feeding code in to this HTML file. We're talking in JavaScript. And the file is going to be reading the JavaScript. So we type in text forward slash JavaScript. And don't forget the double quotes. The double quotes are also known as parentheses. Parentheses. My code writer will automatically just end when I put in the tag now. Watch when I put that tag. You can see there's the script ending with the forward slash script. And that's showing the ending of the script section. In most coding languages, you'll see that they use these common elements. Things are almost always the same to help you to understand and get used to the way it's laid out. There's a pattern to it. So you see these tags in HTML are what makes it quite unique. And here I'm going to put H1 for the header. And I'm going to put a heading in there. And that will obviously be much larger script. It's going to look much bigger. I'm going to write Abhinav. He's the guy that I want to write in there. Abhinav's wonderful choice of games. So it's going to be holding a whole range of different games. And we'll use Abhinav's name there. And when I save this HTML file, you'll see how the header of Abhinav's wonderful choice of games will stand out. And it will be clearly seen. Oops, we're not going to call it a colon. We're going to go with parentheses or double quotes. So we're going to call it form one. That would be an appropriate name for a form. We'll just call it form one. I can't think of anything better than calling it form one and double quotes to end it off. Now that ID is indicating the name of this form. 
the idea is giving it some sort of indication of what its idea is. And now we're going to go with the method. And the method is how we deal with this form. We're going to be posting. So the posting method will be what we, we uh, use. We've got different types of methods. Don't worry too much if you don't understand that. You get post and you get uh, get and all these different other methods. So it's just a way of sending information. And then we close our form with that. And now we're going to bring in a label. So I'm going to bring that in just be in the in the form. So we'll go label and we type it like L A B E L. That's the label. And we close it off like that. So we've got my set of games. Because we're going to have a whole lot of different purple mesh games with the hyperlinks feeding into this HTML file. And that will be the set of games that I'm going to be showing by means of this option box. So when you click on a, one of the options, it'll take me to that game. But click on a different option, it'll take me to a different game. Next line. All right, now we're going to bring in the select ID, and that will be location equals ID equals location. And I'm not going to go explain all of this to you. It's just something you can receive when you get this email. I'm going to send it to you via email through Purple Mash. You're just going to save this and you're going to then see if it works on your computer. Now I'm going to bring in the event and this is the on change event. Every time we click on one of the options or the other option, that's the on change event whenever that changes. So we're going to go on change equals and then we're going to go set iframe source and that's going to be the function. We're going to be putting in a function here. So we're going to put round brackets and close it off with the double quotes or parentheses. And we'll just bring in that with the ending tag. And that's going to be a function that's going to be called when we change the selection. So when we choose this option or that option, it's going to, it's going to call this function set iframe. So set iframe gets called every single time we choose a different option in our various options one game or another in the whole selection of games and now comes for the different choices we call them options so we got the option and we're going to bring in the values of those options and now whatever goes in these quotes those double quotes that I put over there that's going to be the purple mash link so we're going to put in option value we're going to bring in another game this is also going to have two double quotes like that and those will be another different game than the first one. So we've got now this third one, option, value equals, and we're just going to put these like that. And we're going to still fill in the link there. The, the link will be filled in those three options. The values will be placed in them. And that we'll get from Purple Mash. I'm just going to end it off. So we've got the ending options and like that. And in between, we're going to type in what they are. So I'm going to put Google. Google's game, and I'm just running anything at the moment because that would be maybe be a game that Google made. Basandile's game would be a game that Basandile is going to be uh, showing in my website that I would have in Mr. B's game would be the third one. So these are three different options brought in from Purple Mash. They would be links that are brought in, and they're going to be brought in those little double quotes. I just want to save this, the HTML to show you how it's going to look. So we're going to give it a name. And once we've given it a name, we're going to save it with the .htm extension, as you already know. And I'll just call it BBBBB. I just couldn't think of anything. And there it is. So if I click on this, it's going to open it. And it says, Avinav's wonderful choice of games. And that, you know, was in the header, the H1. That's why it's so big. And then my set of games, if you click on this, look at that, it's got these three options. There's three options at the moment. I'll make it bigger. Bus and Dealer, Google's, and Mr. B's game. Now, each one of those is going to be linked to a Purple Mash game. Everyone, and let's have a look at View Page Source. And there you can see the code behind the HTML. What you saw before this was the front end. This is the back end code. Often you'll hear coders talking about front end and back end code. The code behind it. All is what makes it is this 
and there you got the option value and we're still going to put in those double quotes the link to a purple mash game as soon as my HTML loads in other words as soon as I click on the icon the Chrome icon and it loads I want to show a default game so I'm going to put iframe ID and this is going to be the game that I'm going to show automatically as soon as my page loads this is what's going to be shown by default by default means it's the one that automatically is shown so we need to give it an ID we also need to indicate where this is going to be found and that would be found on purple mesh so we're going to go SRC for the location of the file it's the location equals and whatever is going to be put in here is going to be the position the address of the purple mesh game that's going to be by automatically shown in this HTML file. And now we're going to go frame border, and that's just on the edge of, of this game. We'll just put it as zero, so we don't want any border. And we'll add in a few more properties. Margin width is how, how wide the border would be. That'll be zero. What I want you to see is that this, these are the properties of the iframe. I'm just bringing in those and margin height would be how far it is from the top or the, the section before this and that we'll just put as one for the moment just see what one turns out to be and then we'll have the width and the height and that's going to be the size of the game that's how the game is going to fit into our page and we know that ours was quite small so I'm going to go 800 and 600 height height equals we use our equals to show that it's going to be 600 and we're using double quotes or parentheses. We'll see how that fits into our file and possibly it'll look that we can easily see our game and we put the iframe and close it so we can see that's how it will look. So now if we go to Purple Mesh and the reason why I'm going to Purple Mesh is to find an activity to feed into the default iframe that what I've just typed, I want to put some game that's going to be shown there, and this is the one that I'm loading at the moment, is just one of the coding activities. I'm going to go to that purple bit over there, and I'm going to go down to share. And why am I going to share? I need to get that link. I want to find the link that I can use to put into the iframe so that I know that as soon as I load my HTML, it's going to be shown. This purple mesh activity, which is these bubbles moving up and down, Will be shown there. Just going to do it again because see it's say uh, there we go. It's share, and over here we go to link. There it is. We're not going to go to the embeds that we did it before, and I'm going to take that little piece there. That is the link to this particular bit of work. That's going to go into my HTML. I'm going to paste that into that iframe in the back end code that I showed you earlier. So we're just going to copy this, and I'm going to right click. Just copied it with Control C, and now we're going to go back to our HTML code, and we're going to add that little bit into it. So here we go. We've opened it up. We here you can straight away see in front of us the iframe, and we're going to move to the SRC. That part is the location, and there we go. We've put the purple mesh. I copied. I right-clicked and paste. Paste it in there. You can just go Control V. The shortcut is Control V, and I play, pasted that in. So this is the default game that's going to play automatically as soon as the page loads. So let's see how that works. Now I need to get a whole lot of other games because remember I said Google's game, Bus and Delay's game, and Mr. Bradley's game. So these would link up to those. So I'm just going to open this little puzzle, and that's just a stupid little puzzle. And I'm going to click on that world over there with a little red ring around it. Open that, and I need to find that link. And look, here's the link. I'm just going to copy that. I've just copied it with the copy button. And that's going to go into one of my options, into the options. And let's see. I've just opened those double quotes where it says Google's game, Bus and Delia's game, in the option and the value. So I'm going to bring that bit of code into it. And that should do, that should bring in that particular game into the HTML. But before I do that, I'd just like to bring in the script section. So let's just add some little bit of script. We've got to bring in that function that we mentioned earlier on. That needs to be 
placed in here. So we're going to bring the function into the script section that will call the various iframes that we have. So we indicate it's a function, and I'm going to call it set iframe source. Set iframe source. And that's the source of the iframe, where the iframe is coming from. So we're going to go set iframe, and I'll just put the uh, curly brackets like that. JavaScript, that's JavaScript syntax, the way they would show it. And we're going to go declare variable, the select equals, and we're going to go in the document, the HTML document, we're going to get element by ID. So we're going to look for something's ID. Get element by ID means we're looking for something by means of its ID. We're calling its ID, ID in round brackets, and we're going to look for the location of that. So, and then after this, just bring in the semicolon. Okay, now we're going to declare another variable. So we've got the element that looks for the location of the file. Now we're going to look for the iframe, and we're going to look for the document, and we're going to get element by ID again, get element by ID looking for my iframe. And that will be the iframe that we're looking for. My iframe. And we're just going to use a single quote and a semicolon at the end. And that's finished. And we'll just look for the variable, the, the URL. So we'll go with the URL. And that's the, the, the file's address. And that will be the third variable. We've got three variables that we've created now in the function. And then we're going to have to bring in the code that indicates what the URL is. So we're going to need to know what the URL, what the address is. So we're going to go the URL equals, <coughs> and we're going to now assign the select dot options. And then we're going to do square brackets and the select. And we know these square brackets are indicating that we're talking about a list. The select dot selected index. Now, selected index indicates which of those options are chosen. Google's game, Mr. Bradley's game, Basandile's game. Google's game, I think, was the first one, which would be zero. Um, Basandile's game, which is the second one, would be the index of one. And then Mr. Bradley's game, which would be the index of two. So that's always starts, I think it's zero based. So they call this zero based dot value and semicolon. So that's brought that in. Remember that many things, and when we later on when you learn about arrays, you'll hear about them being zero based. We start reading at zero and it goes up like that. And then we go with the iframe, and here we were talking about the location of the iframe. So that would be the SRC equals the URL. Okay, so don't worry too much about all the technicalities. This is a lot difficult for you guys. But I'm just going to send this to you via email and in Purple Mash, and you guys will then just place it. Now I'm going to get this link again. So obviously we're going to get the link of this puzzle. Just doing it again, copying it. I click on that copy button. I could do it that way by selecting and right-clicking and copying. But there's a copy button as well. And I'm going to bring that into this option area where it says Google's Game. Can you see? I left those open. Now we're going to look for the next activity that we can use. We've finished with this puzzle. We can go to the second activity. I hope this is going to work because I've done all the typing and I'm very likely to make a small mistake. And if, if so, then it wouldn't work perfectly. But we've got to load a game now and we've got to find the next link. Because remember, we're going to choose one option. It'll go to that game. Another option it goes to a different game. One option Google's game goes to that puzzle that we've just shown you. Then Basandile's game, which is the second, would take us to the game that I'm showing you now. So I'm just going to go puzzle. I've got this puzzle, which was done with a grade one group. And now I'm just going to click on the link. I'm going to find that link. I'm not looking for the embed code. I'm just going to copy on the link now. Copying that. Go to the copy button. And I'm going to bring that in where it says Basandile's game. So there we go. I've pasted it in with Control V. And now we have that in. And now we're looking for a third activity. And the third activity is going to be found over here. I'll just choose this, this card game. 
wonderful game for those of you who want to do like uh, cards and matching things. So I'm just going to click on the play button and that will activate this and then we'll go into shared. So play and shared. So let's go to play and the game is activating. Go to the, this purple part on the right here. On the left hand side, go to save. And we're again looking for the third, actually the fourth link. And we go click on link. We select. We copy that. I did control C. And now, or I could do it right click and copy. And now I go down to where it says Mr. B's game. I'm going to paste it in here. Now because I've done a lot of typing, there's a possibility this isn't, isn't going to work. So we go file, save. We're just going to open to see whether it's going to work. And we'll briefly just have a look whether it's going to work at all. So I've got, by default, you should have a game loading. It is. You can see it's all purple at the bottom. And here we have Abinov's wonderful choice of games. And there is that game that's by default is showing in the bottom area over here. And that was that bubble game in, that we did in coding. And now if I click on one of these options, it would show Google's game, Basindile's game and Mr. Bradley's game. If I click on any of these, it should link. And I've just clicked on it and I see it's not loading a different game. So there's probably something that I've typed that's faulty there. And I'd have to look at it, go over it very carefully and just find. I've looked at Basindile's also doesn't work. So we know there's a fault in this code. And largely because I've been typing it as I'm going through this and probably have made some small typo or some problem is in there. But I have loaded a different um, file which can show you a working model or to show you how it does work and then it'll give me a bit of time to study this and find where I made my mistake but let's have a look at it just a brief look at what we have here maybe I can possibly see what I, why it's not working and I'm just copying that and paste that they are the same so they, that looks pretty much the same there's no fault in my in my um, function everything seems to be looking okay there I need to show you how to comment out your code so let's get to that I do want to show you how to do a multi-line comment so I'm going to put that in in a moment and you'll find that quite interesting because that means you can do multiple lines now when you do a multi-line code you're going to use the starting tag like that then we're going to put an exclamation mark. The exclamation mark, we all know that is also with the number one, I think, on your keyboard. So you press the exclamation mark, and then we're going to put two dashes. So two hyphens. So we've got exclamation mark, two hyphens, and look, you see everything's gone green. That indicates that it's reading, not reading that as code. Now watch when I bring in two hyphens before this. It's showing that anything between these two tags is not going to be read as code. So you, uh, everything I type now will be shown as green. And that's showing you that it's not considered code. Now this is very important because what when you type all your comments in uh, to explain your code and to analyze your code, it's very necessary to write in um, comments that just explain what you're doing. And very often you're going to work in teams with other people and you're going to need to have a little bit of an explanation of what your code does and how it what's its function. So commenting is rather, is re really quite important. So here you have multi-line commenting. That means you can write on various lines and it will not be understood to be code at all. Okay, I think the two forward slashes would indicate that that would be a comment, but as you can see it's not taking it out. So you see where I've typed in early on this is not code. You can see straight away, look at that, and you can see that it's still showing up as white. So that would tell me that it's not commented out. With the two forward slashes, this is not code. And in a minute now I'll show you that. And it should stand out on my HTML file. It would be showing. And you can see, if we look over our code, you can see that over here it says iframe ID. And there is nothing typed in there. So I need to give it a name. So... I will just give this iframe some form of identification. So I'll call it my iframe. I think that seems to be the most appropriate name. Okay, so we've got my iframe is the name of the default iframe that when we loaded the, the page, it was the game that automatically shows. So let's just play this again. Abhinav's wonderful choice of games. 
we've loaded the page and you can see this is not code is still showing with those two forward slashes so it's not being read as as any form of commenting out so and it's still not working um, I've got to look very carefully and just see whether there's something that I, I haven't done. Now, I have sent you a file via email which works, so you've just got to make the necessary changes to that. And I will also demonstrate the through a working copy in a minute. I don't really have the time to go over all of this and try to analyze where I've made my mistake. But you've got these by default, all those little bubbles going up and down. That was the default game. It was found in the iframe, my iframe. I called it that in the ID. Okay, so there is some fault in this code that I can't quite pick up on. And I wanted to go to the working model, one that clearly demonstrates that it does work and what it's supposed to do. And that will save us on a great deal of time. And you do have a copy of that. Just changing that to zero. Let's have a good look at the working model that does work. So it's this one over here. I'm just going to load it. And you can see it says Google's games to play. And I've got my game. And you can see by default it's just some news event that's showing. So if I click on the drop downs, which is the various options, if I click on those, click on the drop down, it's got the first one. And if I click on it, it should load a Purple Mash game. And the game is loading. It takes a bit of time. It's called WordSpot. So that was a an activity that I did with the grade sevens. So if I click on the the third option and it's loading, and this should be a puzzle. I think it was the same puzzle that I did before. There we go, the puzzle's working. And here's the code. I'm gonna just display it on the board so you guys can see it. You have a copy of it in your email. What I'm selecting now should be changed. You've got to go into Purple Mash, find the link of the activity you want to put in, and you've got to put it in there. And don't forget to change where I wrote animation. You will then write whatever you want to call your game. And you're going to have to change all three of those options. So the second one, that one, you're going to have to find another link of one of your games and the third one. And don't forget your change, animation, text toolkit, and monster, monster game. You will, you will make something that is more suitable for you. And you can even change that BBC, that news iframe that you can make more suitable as well to by default play some purple mash game as well i sincerely hope you found this video interesting i do think that it offered you quite enough to be able to construct this and you do have the code which was emailed to you if any of outsiders would like to get hold of this code i'll put it in the comment section so that you can have a look at it I don't know if that'll be easy because I know that sometimes in the descriptions and comments, HTML tags are not appropriate and don't quite fit in. But thank you so much for watching and we ask you to subscribe to our YouTube and we ask you for your support as well. Thank you.